show's all about lead, Led Zeppelin. No, no, I think they meant LED, not the Zeppelin. We are a photography <laughs> show. I guess that makes more sense. There's only one thing that we love more than eating food with chopsticks, and that's photography. I'm sure, I'm sure glad I took my flute lessons. Yeah, I'm glad I you came have too. That's Woo! a nice looking Woo! flute. That is. But There's hey. a good story with that flute too. <laughs> so hey, welcome to Studio North. We're in Northern California today. Uh, Steve came up and uh, we created this makeshift studio in my ukulele room. That's it. And uh, you know, sounds going to be a little echoey today, but we're excited because we're talking about LEDs. Lead. LED. Yeah, get the no, LED. LEDs, man, a brand new technology for us, really. We we just started using LED lighting for photography. It's been used for years yeah. for video. Yeah, I, I think probably five or six years ago I started using it in video. Yep. Um, there was a lot of problems, though, with it. It was very expensive. It had flicker rate problems, all kinds of things. But, man, things are getting good. Things are. And, and we have been asked a ton of questions about LED lighting lately. Yeah. In fact, we've been asking ourselves a lot of questions <laughs> about LED lighting, like, does it work? Yeah. Is it going to replace our flashes? So that's question number one, because we're seeing all different types of LED stuff. Nice. And we're seeing people that are going, if you buy this round one, you can actually use it as a flash. Well, and there's so much, con yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, there's so much confusion out there. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing advertisements all the time with people saying, all you need is this little video light. All you need is this little round light. Yeah. All you need is the bigger round light. All you need is one with a hole in it. Exactly. I mean, all this kind of LED stuff, what is good, what isn't? That's right. So we've been putting it through the test lately to find out, like, what can we actually do with LED lights? You took it up to Lake Tahoe this I did. weekend. I did. I took my daughter out in Lake Tahoe. I actually used the Studio Essentials light here, which is by Interfit. It's a 100-watt monolight, essentially. Um it was a great little light. Now, I, I didn't know how it was going to perform. I wanted to see if I could actually overpower the sun. It's something that we do all the time with our Interfit S1s. Yep. We, they put out a wallop of power, yep. and we can overpower that sun. Yep. I tried it with the this light. Was I successful? You saw the pictures. Yeah. Did you? You were successful. I was successful. But, but you had to play. I had to cheat it, right? Yep. I had to shoot an open shade, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. So, in fact, if you take a look at these pictures here, yep. you know, the one that, I, that we have up on the screen right now is actually without the light. Right, and what I wanted to do is use it without the light, so I can just get the background partially exposed, you know, correctly, so it's not blown out. Yeah. But now, this, go ahead. You said you had to remove this next this picture right here. You had to remove all the baffles, right? And this was the basic. Yeah. Hard so so light. I started out, you know, this this kit that we have is is two of these lights together. It comes with with two pop up soft boxes and two stands, yeah. right? So I actually had to take out the baffles, both of them in the softbox, in order to get enough light because the first shots... So it's like shooting a bare darker. cone, basically. Basically, yeah. yeah. So if you look at this shot now, this one is with just basically the bare light shooting through that, that softbox. Okay. It looks good. It does. I don't say it looks great. No. It looks it, flashed, almost. It does. It, it just has flat. a hard quality of light to it. And that's one thing I have not liked about LED lights is they always seem very hard, even when I diffuse them. Mm -hmm. I still seem to see like extra shadows if there's multiple diodes in there, even now the big single diodes, I'm still seeing very sharp shadows. Yeah. You know, and I tried this a couple of different times. In fact, if you look at the picture now, this I took off the softbox completely and I just used it just like we have it here on set. I just used it completely bare. So the LED element was showing. Now light was spreading everywhere, but it actually, I kind of liked the way it looked better because it wrapped that light yeah. around them. So it didn't look as flashed. Because the, the internal, the softbox. So. It, 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 so, bottom line is, it can kind of work, but I wouldn't say it replaces flash. No. And one, one thing about this, one of the questions that we get asked all the time is, is about lumens, right? And it's yeah. super confusing. So, yeah. there's kind of a formula set up for what the lumen rating Correct. is. Correct. And to. I know some of you out there are scientists and you're going to say, no, it's this is the mathematical equation. But if you just simply look at a LED light... A uh, hundred watts is equal to about nine thousand lumens. Yeah, give so or take, it's it's ninety you know? to, to to whatever ninety yeah. to hundred ninety to ten is the ratio. Yes. So ten watts. Yeah, and so like our S ones, those are five hundred watts. So they're effectively forty five thousand lumens versus nine thousand lumens. So when I'm trying to overpower the sun, I mean that's a big difference. Yes, that's right? why you're struggling, and that's why we struggle with LEDs yeah. because they're just not there. They're getting there. Uh, we had a chance to play with Stella Lights yeah. this last weekend, and uh, 
Pretty impressed. But stellar was pretty. Stellar was pretty stellar, actually. It, for it indoor, really was. I, we didn't use them outdoor, so I don't know. But yeah. indoor. Yeah. But you you took some shots. So I took the opposite uh, approach, and I shot in the evening with it. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I had found is, you know, I, I've played. You've known this too for the last while. Is that LEDs work great in low light? Yeah. To a point, you know, when it's dusk, it's just that beautiful time, and you just a little kiss of light. You throw an LED light through a shoot through umbrella. You just get nice fill light mm-hmm. and that's what i used it for and i found you know again i i liked it but as the sun really dropped down it started to get dark i found out that even this at its lowest setting was still too much light at that point okay which is just so funny but the problem is when it gets dark we have to open our lenses up so wide to bring in a lot of ambient light that now this just so it's too much. So I have a question for you. Were you finding it harder to control that exposure then? I did. Taking the pictures? I mean, were you finding that maybe the face was blown out or what yep. was the, what was the issue? There? Yeah, because when I wanted to find that balance between ambient and fill, there was just way too much fill. Mm-hmm. So my subject, I had my daughter out there and she was just glowing, right? And then it looked like just black darkness around her. I couldn't get that balance just right. Okay. And I kept having to move the yeah. light and I would try things. And so again... It's not, I don't think it's quite there, but there are applications like we saw it with those Stella lights this weekend. When you have the, that nice medium light mm-hmm. and you just need to fill something in, you can definitely do something with LED. So, hey, I, I am excited though about this technology yeah. because I mean, like I said, we're at the infancy of this technology for, for, for photography. Yeah. Like it's only going to get better and better. I mean, you look at something like this, this is now a, a $200 light. Correct. That's able to do pretty amazing things. Where's it going to go in five years? In exactly. Two years. Like yeah. Stuff advances so fast. So I'm totally, totally excited yeah. about what's going on. Both of us have been playing around with just LED flashlights. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're still very small and, and In fact, we're, we're going we're gonna to do a flashlight test on just a, one of our little small We will. So update. keep, keep yeah, looking on our channel yeah. for that coming up. We're also going to do a full review of the, the uh, Studio Essential lights. Yeah. But here's something that got me really, really excited. So... I use these out in the field. Yep. And what did I use them with? In Lake Tahoe, I used them with... This is brand new. This is brand new. new. So we actually did the world premiere, which is pretty exciting. Yes. Uh, the other day at our workshop in Southern California, first people to ever use one of these was us, which is pretty yes. cool. But this is the Nomad, made also by Interfit. This is a, a battery pack. The thing looks huge, right? And there's yep. a reason why it looks huge, is that this battery... Is huge. Is huge. <laughs> I mean, it's a ton of power. So actually, it splits in half this... this this half is the inverter, correct? Right. This half is the battery, two plugs. Yep. This thing, if you use this on something like a honey badger, which is a three hundred and twenty watt uh, monolight, or maybe even a yeah. a Paul Buff light or whatever you have, that you runs can run up, up to like six of them at one time. You can. It's, and, it's and amazing. Check this out: twelve hundred full power shots. Twelve hundred well, shots. Yeah, exactly. Full power. Yeah. So if you're shooting at something that's you know like we shoot most of the time half power that kind of thing. You're going to be able to shoot for days, not just a day, but yeah. days. Yeah. This thing was just absolutely incredible. Yeah. One of the things that I like, now there's, you know, there's the Vagabond that we all have, right? Made by Paul Buff. Everybody's got one. Yep. The thing that's a pain in the rear about that thing is the silly clamp. That's, why did they make that it's clamp? It's the worst clamp in the world. Every time you use it, it will fall off your stand. This thing I was really impressed with. It's a basic design, but it fit on the, the, on the stand yep. and it didn't fall off. And it was rock solid. It also pops right off. You just push yeah. on the tank. And, and the thing is, you just I was just going to mention, you mentioned it just pops right off. That is the same footprint where it pops off as a C-stand. Yep. Or I mean the, uh, you know, the super clamp. Super clamp. So you actually can attach that to a super clamp and use a super clamp to put it wherever you want. Yeah. It also has a high-powered USB yep. charging input. So if you want to charge your phone or whatever while you're your using Your drone, whatever, whatever it is it is. needs to be. That's um, an incredible. But man, this thing was just great to have out there. And yep. it made for a nice lightweight kit. You think, oh, it's going to be heavy. It's not bad. I mean, no. when you feel it. No, thing. this is a great great unit with a lot of power. So and, uh, this thing is selling for three forty nine. dollars Yep. Which uh, they have the, the Vagabond, I can't remember what it's called, Extreme or something. It looks very similar to this thing. Yep. Which and, is like three ninety nine. So this is like 50 bucks less and this is better. It's way better. So, so we're excited about having that in our kit now. We can actually we'll put the link below to that okay. thing if people want to check it out. Fantastic. But uh, yeah, so it's good stuff. So I'm I'm excited about LED. Yep. I, LED I think really is the future. Uh, maybe not for everything, but it, it's more and more. It's just getting better and better. And 
Right now, we're being lit completely by LEDs. Yep. They're quiet. They're not hot. They're just wonderful to work with. So, Speaking of new stuff, so the Nomad's new. We have been going crazy over this brand new software oh, by Skyloom yeah, yeah. called Aurora HDR 29. This is part of our Talking e. Raw. That's right. So I had a chance to play with it, and I want to show you right now my experience. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to open up an image here. Um, let's grab an image from, this is the lavender fields just outside of Mount Shasta in Mount Shasta, California. Actually closer to Weed, California. And uh, it's a shot one, uh, I took one morning. And while we're waiting, it's going to here bring it up and let's take a look at this image. Now immediately you go, hey, that's a pretty good image. But watch what happens when I poke on this little eye here and I say, actually, here's what the image originally looked like. Now here's what the image looks like run through Aurora HDR 2019. You can also see that this is something I've yet to touch anything. This is just what they call their natural. They've got all kinds of looks. Look, at here's a look called HDR1. I click on that and wow, look at how vivid that is. Look at all the detail in there. Um, I can then again turn it off and on and see the difference. I can say, look at that, I want to look at a split screen. I'm not going to give you a rundown on everything that this software does. Um, I just was so impressed with what's going on. Here's one of the things I was most impressed with. This is an older image from an older camera, but so let's pull this in anyways. Um, but what I want you to see is when I turn this on and off, what I want you to see is that it's not introducing artifacting. It's not doing crazy stuff to this image. It's just bringing out details that I, I can't believe were inside of this. So let's go fit to screen again before, after. How amazing is that? Yeah, and maybe you're thinking that's a little too vivid for me. This is what I'm loving about this software. If I go to the uh, control panels off to the right hand side, it's laid out exactly like Photoshop's laid out exactly like Lightroom, um, the raw processor in Lightroom. These are all things that I understand and that we all use all the time. I can change the white balance, the exposure, the contrast, um, highlight, shadows, I, you have all these like level sliders. I can use saturation, vibrance. I can adjust the color contrast. I can actually decide how much of this HDR enhancement I want to add or take away. So I've got things like clarity. These are all things that we hear or, or we know about through Lightroom and Photoshop. So if I want to add some more clarity, I love this microstructure HDR because sometimes it goes a little bit too far. Now these are all presets. I don't have to go with a preset. I actually can just on my own choose how I want it to look like, but I'm loving the fact that um, it just takes a minute to go through here. Look at that structure again. Let's go. Where were we? Here's where we are. This product blew me away. Now you all know that I'm a portrait photographer, but I love landscape photography. And one thing about landscape photography, it gets really aggravating because I could spend way too much time editing a landscape uh, image. The other thing that down here, I have collections. I can create my own looks, some favorites, but you know, they got dramatic and artistic and landscape. Here, Trey Ratcliffe, he, he's the master of HDR images. And again, this was really meant for HDR bracketed shots. I'm creating this off of one single exposure. Um, here we go, indoor melon squeeze is what Trey calls this. Look at that, look at the before and the after, right there, one click of the button, and I've got an image that I'm going to want to hang on the wall. It, it, it allows me to mask and I can do all kinds of things inside of here. It's got adjustments down below where I can right here, the uh, HSL, so the hue, saturation, and luminance. So maybe I say, yeah, I really like how this looks, but those greens, we'll move them around here. I'm going to change the hue of those greens. Maybe I say, ah, it's still too saturated, so I can lower the saturation level of those greens. Or maybe I say, you know, they were really super bright. I have this infinite control, or I can just go with one of the presets. This product is simply amazing. I believe it's a game changer. So you can see why we're so excited about this product. I just, I'm 
just going crazy over we what sound I can like do. Two little girls buying yeah. dresses or something. It's like, I'm amazed what it does with landscape photos. Well, yeah. here's what I'm amazed about. Yeah, right. Is not just landscapes, but I've been doing it on some portrait stuff too, which I've been kind of blown away with. Yeah. But what I really love is you can use it as a plugin. And what do I mean by that? You can use it in conjunction with your favorite products like Lightroom. Yeah, yeah right. I like to use it as a standalone. You use it as a standalone. You love right? to use it as a. You're, you're as a, a Photoshop plugin. guy. You can still use it as a plugin for Photoshop, but but I'm a Lightroom dude, right? Yep. So everything I do is in Lightroom. But it's super super cool that you can use this as a plugin. So you know, I've got this picture up right now. All I need to do is simply do a you know a right click or double click on a Mac, and I just say edit in, go to Aurora, right? It opens up Aurora. Now that it's open, they'll ask me, do I want to make an HDR of that picture? Yep. I just say yes. So right now I'm going to say yes. I'm going to make an HDR of that picture. The picture pops right up. And it actually doesn't pop up right away. It's got these kind of funny sayings on the top (laughs) right. It's like making it perfect, making it awesome, applying special color, you know. That's right. Special sauce is being added. So once this picture pops up, you're going to see the difference, which is, I mean, like you look at this picture... Right there, there it you is. You know, you look at that, and then I just hit this. Show and me the before. See, there's, there's the before, before, right? Now the after. Now the wow. after. And the thing that's cool is you're like, maybe that doesn't look as HDR-y or as as I used to be. Now I'm kind of, I'm now I'm talking about the same stuff you talked about <laughs> rather than just this. But the cool thing is, is that no, it doesn't look HDR-y or HDR-ish, whatever you want yeah. to say, right? It looks like it's natural. But when you go back and you hit the the picture of how it was before, you're like, oh, it's pretty dark. And oh wow! Yeah, where is it finding that information? Check it out blows that, me away. Check out that spot on the floor. Right? Yeah, it's just cool. Look at the detail. It and pulls. then all I need to do is hit this little blue button on the top here, just say apply, and boom, it's, right, right back into Lightroom. It takes you right. Back I still in have there. my original image. Right now, there's the new image. Here's my original image. Okay. Yeah. Boom. Done. So yeah, if you're using Lightroom and you 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 know that's your system of doing things, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. This is just like adding Nick to it and adding... Exactly. But exactly. the great part is, is there's a lot of people out there that are just kind of, you know, the weekend photographers. Yeah. And they're going, yeah, I've really not wanted to pay monthly for Photoshop. Guess what? This is such a great product that y- you don't need Photoshop. You can just use this I, it, Aurora HDR. It must have been. I don't, I don't know the history of the company, right? I mean, we just started using it a few weeks ago. But... It must be some of the guys that worked for Adobe before because everything in the yeah. menu system, the way the it program looks works, identical. looks like, identical to Bridge or Lightroom, it works very similar. It does. But so it does we will job. definitely, we've got a link down in the bottom, so if you're interested in it, we've got a, a code down there. Yep, you they get gave a us little a discount. discount code, actually, so, so make sure you check that out, and you will not regret this thing's under a hundred bucks. Yeah. Like what a great add on for that. It's, it's, it's something that you will just add to your workflow. Yep. So really excited. So, Hey, we have got a fortunate question today, but we do not have our fortunate, have fortunate cookies. cookies. Let's see if I can balance this thing up here with that. Wow. Ooh, You're really risking I yeah, it. I don't think I want to do that. So we don't have our fortune cookies because Mr. Wong did not want to make the trip up to Northern California. From That's San right. Francisco. So we don't have our, our cookies today, but we do have the fortunate question. Do you remember what it was? It does. Because <laughs> it are, came are, via email today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if you've memorized are you, it. Are you ready for I this? Am. I don't even have to memorize it because this is what has been on everybody's mind. And that is how important is... Who was it from? It was from Bill from Lancaster, California. <laughs> Lancaster. Lancaster, yeah. California. You know, we have a lot of people in California. We need to get our audience grown outside of the U.S. But, Bill, the question that you had is, how important is it that I have two card slots? (laughs) You went there. You know. Bill, you went there. Bill, what are you trying to do to us? You you know, you just, right now, those are fighting words, huh? Okay, who wants to answer that one? Yeah. Do you care about two card slots? No. I don't either. I don't understand. Should you care? I don't know. No. If you need two card slots... Then buy a camera with two card yep. slots. Here's the whole thing. I asked you. So this big thing, in case you've been living under a rock, the two card slot thing came came to a, a big blow up when Nikon just introduced their Z6 and Z7 Correct. cameras, right? These yeah. were high end cameras. People were so angry that when Canon came out with theirs with one card slot, people didn't even want to talk no. about it. They just got so excited. People people just went ballistic. Like these cameras are fantastic cameras, but people said they are doomed to death because yeah. they don't have two card slots. Now, how long have most professional photographers shot with one card slot? All the way up until 
three years ago. Exactly. Because <laughs> so, we've always had just one card slot. So, you know, I don't know how anybody has survived with only one card slot. That's right. Because we used to put two rolls of film in our cameras, huh? So, I, I have an, I actually, yeah. <laughs> I have an answer for this, What's right? That? And it's, it's kind of Nikon's answer for this. Yeah. But I, it's really true. So, Nikon chose to go with XQD cards yeah. on these cameras for a reason. Yeah. They are bulletproof cards. I was going to say, they're expensive. <laughs> yes, they're expensive. But they're bulletproof. They These cards, I shot with them on my D4 forever. Um, you know, and everybody that has a D5 shoots with them. They are bulletproof. They do not fail. Yeah. Scott Kelby was even saying the other day, he says he has never heard of an XQD card failing. That's right. Ever. And you know what? When we start talking about card failures, I, I've only had a uh, Compact Flash card I've had one or an S, I mean an SD card fail one time. I had a compact flash card because it was my fault. I bent the pin. Yeah. Mine was mine also. I, I pulled it out while the camera was on and we did something. We switched it with another camera. We put it right back in and I started shooting and all it did was write over the top of other things. It didn't fail. I wrote over the top yeah. of things. And I did have one card that totally failed, but it failed as I shoved it in. As I pushed it in, I pushed it in sideways and it you, you separated. Bent it, right? I bent it. Yeah. So it's like not like they just failed. Up and failed. And the reality is, if they do, like I had that card that I actually formatted with all those pictures on it in and, July. Remember yeah. that? And I just panicked because, like, oh, I lost my pictures. But I just got the software, ran the recovery software, ran the recovery, and, got, and got everything back, plus yes. pictures that I took three months ago. So yeah, I don't know how that worked, <laughs> but they came back. But anyways, the, the whole the whole bill, the whole thing is: Do you need two slots? No. No. Are you a great photographer with one car slot? Yes. Yeah. Do you need two to be a great photographer? Yeah. And I don't even no. buy into the, you know, only all pros have to have two card slots. No, they don't. And, and there's plenty of pros that don't care about it either. If in it, Again, like you said, Mark, if that's you, Bill, and you think I have to have two card slots for my There's backup, a lot of cameras out there that you can buy with two card yeah. slots. So, so you know, these new ones are not Sony, for you. Right? Go get a Sony. Go yeah. with, get whatever. But make sure you only get the A9 or the uh, A7. A7R3 or whatever because all the rest of them only have one card slot. One card slot. <laughs> a good question, Bill. And like always, we ask that you send in your questions right. to us. If you do, you'll get one of these lovely. That's right. Lovely. We're without it today, Bill. We are going to send you kits. the coveted chopstick guy kit, which is our kit that contains our two sets of chopsticks, our chopstick holder, the bowls for wasabi, wasabi, and uh, much, much more. Much, much more. Like cardboard. And <laughs> hey, do you have any uh, food for thought for this week? Any food for thought? Yeah, you know what? I, I think the actual, like, everybody arguing about two card slots lately is one of the things that just brings us back to, guys, photography is supposed to have, supposed Go to be fun. take a picture. Right? Go out and take some pictures. Quit worrying about your card slots. Have fun. Remember the reason you got in, involved in photography in the first place. Was to talk about specs. Specs. That's what it's all about. <laughs> no, it's creating. Get out and create something. So don't do it yet, but turn us off in a minute and yes. get out there and grab your camera and make something happen. Yes, that's exactly right. I think my big food for thought for this week is I'm liking where technology is going. Yeah. I, I had said to you the other day, and a lot of our followers I, I, that we correspond with, I said, you know what, right now... It's an incredible time to be a photographer. It We've is. got a slew of just incredible cameras being pushed out on the market right now. Great new technologies. It's an exciting time. Great like new we software. have never, ne it's never been easier to take a great picture. Yep. You don't even have to be a good photographer to take a great picture. <laughs> just look at Instagram. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, get out there and, and man, have fun. You know what we want people to do? We want them to like and subscribe. So if you've not subscribed, hit the subscribe button right now. It's, and then it's probably it's down here. It's and down then right? you hit the right little there. bell next to it that says every time there's a new uh, thing, you're going to be notified. Every so, time. Every time. Every time. As long as YouTube notifies you. They'll every notify time. you possibly. <laughs> Maybe. So, but you got to ring that bell. Hit subscribe. But most of all, we want you to. Don't forget. Say, say sushi. sushi. All right, everybody. <laughs>